Hello brothers and welcome back to another glorious video today. We are going to be looking at the Primaris Executioner and also the Adeptus Mechanicus um, Scorpius Doom Rider. Hopefully that is the, the actual name. I think it's called Scorpius something, but I'm just going to call it the Mech Tank because now we have the rules. We actually have some of the fancy rules for them we finally have the rule for the execution of main gun so i'm going to be talking about that looking at it giving my thoughts and feedback and all that kind of stuff so let's jump in and let's have a little discussion so let's start with the big boy the big the big massive gun on top which we've all been debating what's it got to be for the past couple of weeks now since well months basically since this thing got announced and it is a heavy laser destroyer range is 72 inches type is heavy two so two shots strength is 10 ap is minus four damage is d6 and the abilities of this is when resolving an attack made with this weapon a damage roll of one or two counts as a free instead so i absolutely love the ability on this am i being a bit spoiled when i say i wanted more damage done d6 is yeah cool but I, I, yeah i am being spoiled when i was going i want two d6 three d6 all that kind of stuff i can understand why they've done the d6 with the heavy two shots strength 10 cool ap minus four cool now the thing which excites me about this the heavy lazy destroyer and it also goes with the macro plasma incinerator which is the other variant of gun you can have on this we'll go into that in a second after i discuss this rule the Quillian optics which you seen up on the screen now it says if in your movement phase this model does not move or moves a distance less than half in its move characteristic it can shoot with its heavy lazy destroyer or macro plasma incinerator twice in the following shooting phase the weapon must target the same unit both times so technically technically if you don't move this and you move half these characteristics then you got to be firing twice with the heavy laser destroyer and with, with its range of 72 i personally am just going to use this as a ordnance firing vehicle i'm just going to keep it in one place and i'm just going to keep firing the daca 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 because the range is 72 and if i don't move it then i get to fight twice with it so it's heavy four shots and technically if the dice gods are on my side i can technically get 24 wounds but then again that's going into like god on dice rolls where the emperor himself is throwing the dice for you so yes but i'm sure you can put out a lot of damage um if you do get the rolls and the damage rolls with this if you know not moving and stuff like that so that does very very much excite me now the other big gun you can have on this if you don't take the um, heavy lazy destroyer you can have the macro plasma incinerator instead and this is basically just the stuff which which we which we normally have on like the dreadnoughts and stuff nothing nothing too spec well i say nothing too special but you know nothing nothing different um you're always going to be going to be supercharging this stuff um so you know put like chapter masters lieutenants captains anything you can which will avoid those ones and stuff like that you 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 want that next to this because this is where all the daca comes into it so the standard shot is 36 inches and type is heavy d6 strength a ap minus four damage is one supercharge the range is 36 this is heavy d6 again strength nine ap minus four damage is two now it says for each hit roll of one made for attacks with this weapon the bearer suffers one mortal wound after shooting this weapon so that's why i say you know always bring something that you can reroll the ones just in case you know um you end up blowing yourself up as i've done plenty of times now the thing about this for me is if i was to choose between the macro plasma incinerator and i choose between the heavy laser destroyer i think it's always going to be the heavy laser destroyer every single time for the simple fact that the range is 72 inches and with the aquilian optics rule where you can basically shoot twice i'd rather have the range on my enemy rather than you know being being a bit closer yes primaris are basically tau stop teasing me and saying i'm a primaris tau player i hate you all yes i am making a lot of gun lines when it comes to my primaris force but it's not my fault gw are making it this way i would like to get into melee and smash you in the face i just i just the, the rules don't support it at this moment in time there's one thing which really confuses me about this whole executioner tank and you can argue this back and forth but for me it's just bizarrely confusing is that this thing is a transport and it's basically saying with this aquilian optics rule is hey if you don't really use this as a transport you gotta get a bigger bonus because what's the point in putting all my troops or how many troops it can take in this 
and then using it as a transport slash you know tank when it's it's better when you could look at the special rule of just using it as a stationary firing vehicle because you get double the attacks with it so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit confused why they have the transport capabilities still on this vehicle i personally would have preferred if this was just like a predator where it was just no transport it's just it's just a mainline battle tank that is it that is the start and end of it maybe then it could be a little bit cheaper i know we don't have the point cost this is where you know you can argue where oh well the repulsor is this and that you know we don't know the point cost so i can't really argue on that front so far but logically if it didn't have the transport capabilities surely that would take a few points off surely that would take a few points off even if it's like 10 to 20 points it would still take some points off if it didn't have the capability to transport troops because if it does have a well we know it has a, the capability to transport troops surely that makes it a more powerful unit technically in game so that means it costs more points where i'd rather just have it as a mainline battle tank especially with this aquilian optics and i'll just keep it in one spot and just keep shooting 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 that is for me personally how i'm going to uh, be using this and it's uh, yeah I'm, I'm just confused i'm just confused if anyone wants to try and change my mind as they say please post it below in the comment section i would like to hear all the feedback on this and next, we have the Scorpius Dune Rider. We actually have some of the stats for this now, which I'm sure you mech boys are zero zeroing one about. You know, you're going all insane in your binary. So it says, this is designed to carry up to 10 infantry models. The Scorpius Dune Rider is a dedicated transport vehicle for your army, Dexter's Mechanicus Army, with a move characteristics of 12. We'll get into that in a second. Dune Riders enable you to swiftly get your close range specialists, such as um, Sicarians and Electro Priest, into positions to threaten the enemy lines. Now, the stats we have on this, this is like, you know, the, the general stats. So, it is um, it is layered depending on how many wounds you get. So, if you've got four wounds, which is um, seems to be 12 wounds, 7 to 12 is the first tier. So, the movement is 12. Blissed skill is free. Attacks are free. If you drop down a tier into the four to six wounds, the movement is nine. The blizzard skill is four plus and the attack is D3. And if you drop down to the bottom tier, which is uh, one to three wounds, then the movement is six. The blizzard skill is five plus and the attacks are one. It also says a Scorpius Dune Rider is a single model equipped with two Kodjin Heavy Stubbers and twin Kodjin Heavy Stubbers and a broad spectrum data tether. I don't know Mechanicus, so if that gets you tingling in your techno bodies, then I'm sure that's going to be good for you. We actually do have some stats for the weapons, but before we get into it, um, it actually does have another rule called the Hover Platform. This model does not suffer uh, the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons unless it advances in the same turn. Now, I've been looking at this article um, for the Scorpius, um, and I cannot, for the life of me, find if it has the fly keyword. Does the hover platform technically mean it does have the fly keyword, or is it just hovering? Well, hovering means flying, but I'm not too sure. I can't see it anywhere, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Hopefully, it does. I, I prefer to have tanks as fly. Um, I think it's a lot more cooler. Um, when, when when they hover and stuff like that. But I know there's a lot of people that hate the fly keyword on tanks. Let me know what would you like for your Mechanicus. Would you like to have it as the fly keyword or not to have the fly keyword? That is probably um, debatable. So these are the stats for the Scorpius uh, Disintegrator. Because if you didn't know, you can make this as a transport or as like... Um, a tank, I, I, I would say. Yes, a tank. So um, these are basically the rules for the tanky stuff even though some of the rules will apply for the transport since the you know the the stubbers on the side and all you know all all that stuff so the first one is the uh, disruptor missile launcher range 36 heavy d6 strength is 7 ap is minus 2 damage is d3 and no abilities basically that's what you get with missile launchers so really no big surprise there it says the disintegrator's primary weapon comes in the form of a, uh, a ferromute cannon which is an excellent option for blasting chunks from enemy vehicles monsters or elite multi-wound infantry so this is the fer the ferromute cannon am i pronouncing that right i hopefully am and the range is 40 inches heavy free strength 8 ap minus 3 damage is free and it has no abilities and lastly, it says, if you like, you can swap this weapon out for a Belarus Energy Cannon. 
it, it may not be quite as much the hitting power as the Ferry Mute Cannon, but it's more than makes up for it with its increased fire rate of fire and even the ability to target units it can't see. So that's pretty cool. You can like sh what, shoot around buildings or shoot over it. You, you know, start doing some of those um, peak no scope shots, <laughs> let's say. So the Belarus Energy Cannon, range 36, heavy 3D3, strength 6, AP minus 1, damage is two and the ability is this weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer so you know all those pesky tau hardening buildings and stuff like that just unload with this gun and just laugh as they all die in their blue goo and that's all we have stats wise for now i'm interested to see what the capacity is for the transport and the executioner i'm wondering if it's going to be lower since it has a bigger gun i'm not too sure we'll we'll have to see maybe it's going to be the same as the repulsor but if it is the same as repulsor and technically since it has better weapons in my opinion does that mean it's going to cost more than the repulsor who bloody knows this will all be revealed to us i, I hope very very very, very soon if you want to be buying these then they're going to be on pre-order um, on the 29th of june we know since we had the price leaks that the executioner is going to be 60 pounds and the mechanicus stuff is going to be 40 pounds from gw but if you want to use you know my element games link in the description <coughs> shameless plug then um you'll be getting 20 percent off that when it when it comes to pre-order day um on the 29th of june right that is me done. I know I'm shameless. I'm sorry. That is me done for another video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and feedback in the comment section as always. And we can have a nice little healthy chat about it down there. Thanks for watching once again. See you in a bit. Have a great day and bye-bye.